So now we're ready to create the glass shards. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to this top view and pick a, a little place over here way out and go back to our line tool and I'm going to just draw some glass shards. And I'm going to draw several of them. And this, is, of course, is something you can go back and refine later. Okay, so that's enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just grab all these, and I'm going to add an extrude to them, because we actually want them to have depth. And I'm just going to make them one inch. And I'm going to create a group, and I'm going to call it Glass Shards. Now if we go back to our particle view, we are going to go ahead and create a shape instance, and we'll put that into event two. And for the particle geometry object, we're gonna go ahead and click this, and we'll bring up our group, which is the pick shards. So in order for this to, to see what's going on here, we're going to have to turn this so that we actually can look at the geometry. And already it doesn't look so good, but that's okay. We do see that it's actually taking the instances. And what we need to change here is that on the shape instance, we actually want to break up particles for each group member, so each different piece of broken glass I had. And we see that right now everything is angled straight up, which is not what we want. So let's go ahead and just add in our rotation. Uh, so we see that. And if we scrub through it, we can see that we now have the particles are, are breaking out. Now these pieces are, are really big, and that's not what we want either. So if we go back, back to the shape instance, we can go down here and we can tell it what scale we want, and we also can tell it what percentage of variation we want. So let's just start playing around with this. So I'm going to put the variation at 50. And let's go ahead and drop the scale so it's 50%. So now if we scrub through, we have some big pieces, but we also have some small pieces. And this does it for the entire group. So if you find that you actually would like to have a lot more smaller pieces, but still would like to have some big pieces, you can always go in and adjust those members inside of that group. And you can do that at any time uh, because it'll always pick up what that what is in that group. I think for this example, we'll just go ahead and scale that down to 30. And there we go. So the other thing that, that's nice that you can do uh, with this is most of the time you want to work with it with is not the full scale of particles because it'll slow your system down. But I'm going to go ahead and turn the viewport up to 100. And I'm going to go into the birth and set this to, let's say, instead of 200, we'll do 2,000. And now we have a ton of particles all moving out. Well, as you can see, one of the things that is it looks like it's just almost like a water faucet of, of glass flying out of the building. And some of that is because our force that we have for the P-bomb is, is a continued strength, a continuous strength. So what we could do to kind of help break this up a little bit is let's go ahead and change the strength so that it's, it's not a constant uh, 1.5. So I turn the auto key on and I'm going to go ahead and make a key and we got 1.5 for this and I'm going to just copy this 
to a couple of the keyframes. And now I'm going to make one that is 0.5, so it's a lot less. And I'm going to copy that around also. And now if we watch it, you can see that it's fluctuating somewhat. And we could always go into our curve editor and play with that some more and, and see if we take this strength, let's say instead of at two or at 1.5, we do two. And we can always go in and add, you know, something crazy, like it really pops there, just to see what happens. And you can see it, it didn't pop a whole lot. Okay. So the last thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and add in a material for these glass shards so that they look correctly. But I'm going to back this up just a little bit and I'm going to select our emitter object and just change it so that it actually isn't renderable. I'm also going to change this object so it's not renderable. And I'm going to bring up the P view. And what we want to do is we actually want to add in a static material into this shape. So turn off auto key so I don't accidentally key something I don't want to. So basically here's the chrome, the default chrome shape I have. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add in the static material into here. And it has a nice place to be able to drag in an instance of that material. So now if we do a quick render, of this, we'll be able to see this, this is what it, uh, it looks like with all the reflections and everything else. And like I said, this is all very easy to play with and you can play with it for a long amount of time, having a lot of fun moving things around and changing the gravity so that maybe this falls out faster. Uh, but that concludes what we were, we're going to be doing in 3ds Max. And I will now show you what I did to uh, very quickly as an overview of the compositing of the shot. So the first thing I did was I rendered out a master shot with all the elements combined. And I did that only because the particles are reflecting off of the building and I wanted to be able to capture that. I also rendered off just the matte shot. So this is the hole that we carved out so I can now carve a hole in the side of the building, and I also rendered out the particles by themselves. And by combining these together, I can now carve out a hole in the building, plus have the particles separate it. And this is important because I wanted to add the fire and smoke effects here, which is just using particular inside of After Effects. And it's using a track mat so that it actually moves. <laughs>